Hello everyone, this is me, the Dark One RCD, here to bring you another episode of Clown Rider Saber. In this case, episode 12, or chapter 12 as they call it, in series. Uh, the mm, That promise, that place. Are basically, this is the pre-Christmas episode. Uh, for those of you who don't know what that means, uh, typically around Super in Super Sentai and Kamen Rider, because of toy sales, they like to ramp things up around the Christmas season. Uh, by having a lot of major stuff go down. In Comrade's case, they typically kill off a major character, whether that be a early season antagonist, or when they have multiple writers early on, one of the writers of the season. <clears throat> In this case, uh, we get a writer death, which this is the last one since... Yeah, because they didn't have one in build, they kind of had a reveal of a traitor in build, and then... Got rid of an early season antagonist. And then... Uh, yeah, actually it was the last season to have the traditional Christmas death with uh, Laser's death before he came back as a buckster. <laughs> anyway, enough about seasons that are well and beloved. <coughs> Let's check out the consensus... The kind of everyone's mixed bag right now with Comrade Saber. Uh, so following up last week's episode, uh, Rentaro is down with... Uh, May looking over him. The Megado are planning their next moves. With their plan for this uh, this branch being revealed. And Sophia is missing. But nowhere in where the fuck she is. So that could be that could be bad. Um, anyway, as it turns out the Megado are trying to use the six swordsmen. To uh, basically steal their elemental energy in a way. To form a portal to their world. The Wonder World. Which will force the two worlds to collide. And summon the Book of Destiny, which they would use to control the world, and Calibur would use to gain basically all the knowledge of everything. Because <clears throat> he is a seeker of knowledge. And I'm getting a lot of Ansem vibes, like, you know, you know KH1 Ansem vibes, you know what I mean? <laughs> uh, for for the very, very big cross-population of people who like Kamen Rider and play Kingdom Hearts, that's a very wide pro cross-population. Anyway... <clears throat> Anyway, so our heroes are basically reeling from what just happened last week, and they catch Buster up on basically everything that just happened, and he's a bit surprised that Caliber is Daichi. Uh, but, you know, at first everyone's like, this is clearly a giant trap, so should we even go out? But Cal but Buster says the smart, basically says thing that basically they have to help protect the people because, you know, they're heroes. So they have to go out, even if they know it's an obvious trap, People are in danger, so they have to go out and protect the people. Uh, <clears throat> he also uh, says that they'll just smash through whatever trap that the Megado have in front of them, which is really cool. I really love Buster, and I hope he doesn't die later. Because, <laughs> I mean, he doesn't die in this episode, but, you know, Christmas isn't happening yet, and there are six, and there are now five writers, so good chance someone else could die. <laughs> anyway, <clears throat> till they head off, to fight the Megado, and basically he tells Kenzan to watch over Espada, because, or he tells Ren to watch over Kento, because Kento, he says, oh, I'm fine, I'm totally fine, I'm not gonna go off on my own and fight Calibur again, I totally have my rage under control. This is what he does in this episode. <laughs> <clears throat> but not before making a quick uh, bedside stop at Ren Charles' bedside to basically... Kind of asks for forgiveness in a way. It's not really asking for forgiveness, but this also kind of is asking for forgiveness. Uh, I also do want to mention uh, that there's a fun moment with May where she basically calls out Kento for acting like a bit of a jackass recently. And I, again, I like May. She has moments where she's really good, and I really wish the show would use her more. <laughs> I'm not just saying that because she's cute. Uh, anyway, back to the plot. <clears throat> so, you know. Rintaro obviously hears him because, you know, it's doing that thing where, oh, you think I'm asleep, but I'm not asleep. Uh, so that he hears him, and then the pair, basically everyone heads off to fight the goblins, or the goblin Megado. Except for Toma, who's ambushed by Zuos, and I think it's Storios? The one with the horn, let me double, I think this one with the horns is either Storios or, it's either Storios or Legos. Legios. Uh, I think it's Storios. 
Uh, but anyway, he's he's ambushed by those two, and they basically don't want him to get into. It is it is Legios. It's Legios. He he's the one with the horns. They don't want him to get in because they already have his elemental energy. But why are they attacking him when they leave Ren to no hop it? No, no, it's Storios. I they look so similar. Anyway. Why do they leave Rin alone and attack Toma, even though they have both, you know, wind and fire? They don't need, they don't need Rin, so why are they just attacking Toma? <laughs> and that's kind of a bit of a plot hole, because they leave Rin alone. And, you know, that's kind of dumb. But anyway, <clears throat> you know, they ambush Toma, and Toma fights both of them. But they mostly fight Zuos, because Legios is basically standing there like, hmm, hmm, I don't have to do shit, Zuos got this shit. Well, uh... Kento goes to confront Daichi uh, at, ironically, the very same spot that he and Toma made their promise with the mystery girl whose name was Luna uh, back when they were kids 15 years ago. So, you know, that's uh, that's major. It, it turns out this exact thing happened 15 years ago. Uh, so, we're learning a little bit about what happened 15 years ago. Basically, uh... 15 years ago, the Megado or somebody opened up six elemental portals that were going to merge the worlds before Daichi stopped it, or we believe he stopped it, and then lost his power to Kento. I mean, lost his power to Toma. Uh, we still don't know clearly what happened 15 years ago, but we're slowly, very slowly, figuring out what happened 15 years ago. So, you know, Kento knows that you know, someone has to be the epicenter of all these you know, pillars of light, these disappeared areas, in order to basically grab the Book of Destiny. So he's here to fight Calibur one last time because he's about to die, <laughs> believing that it's his duty to beat Calibur not only for his father's sake but also for the sake of his friends and allies because of what happened last episode. And uh, that was dumb. <laughs> so no, th so from the, re from the rest of this, this is all just fight scenes, and it's pretty really cool fight scenes. Like the fight between Espada and Calibur in this episode are is really cool and. I really love Calibur's new form. Like, I love the sounds for it. And if, like, if if I were purchasing uh, Comrade Saber stuff right now, and if his driver wasn't so fucking simple, I probably would hop on that. Uh, just for the Henshin sounds, because that is really cool. Like, the Dual Dragon, our Tyrannical Dragon stuff is, like, really cool to me, because I like Evil Rider shit. <laughs> uh, anyway... Uh, so, Rintaro kind of forces himself up out of bed, even though he's still all damaged and injured. And manages to hop into where Toma is to basically tell him, Hey, you're the only one who can stop Kento from being a dumbass right now. <clears throat> and then Toma takes off to figure out where exactly uh, Kento is. And while he does it, uh, he drops the name Luna, and this sparks Toma's lost memories. And he remembers exactly what happened at least from his perspective, 15 years ago, uh, his promise with Luna and and Kento about how they promised to never leave each other alone, how they promised to be friends forever and always protect each other. Which, uh, 15 minutes later, yeah, Luna got sucked into a book in the sky, and she probably will be a plot point later. Uh, yeah, so that happened. And so he's basically trying to figure out, hey, where's this spot? Uh, while he's looking through his memories. Uh, wish he would have. <laughs> maybe wish he figured out earlier, because by the time he gets there, uh, night has fallen, and uh, Kento is on his last legs. Uh, he just got his ass majorly kicked. I mean, he already got his ass kicked last episode, but now he got a double ass whooping, which <clears throat> uh, typically means in most things you're about to die. Interestingly enough, I will mention this: that in the middle of the fight, uh, Kento is forced out of his is forced out of his transformation, which. There's a thing in Rider and Super Sentai where typically if you're forced out of your transformation, you can't immediately transform back because there are going to be either repercussions for the immediate transformation back after being you know, kicked out or something else. It just it depends on the series logic, but I guess Saber doesn't have that series logic because he just wills himself to keep standing and transforms again. Uh, <clears throat> I mean, all he does right after is use a finisher and get hit by Calibur's finisher in a rather honestly cool scene. Uh, but still, I just wanted to mention that because it's kind of an interesting thing because, t again, typically in Rider, uh, you can't immediately transform again after Trent after being knocked out of a transformation because you're either too injured to or there's something with your gear that prevents it. I don't 
no, I think this was either build or X aid was the thing that you would injure yourself if you immediately transformed after being knocked out of your transformation. I don't remember which one. It was one of those series. It wasn't Zeo. Zeo, I didn't don't think I don't think had this rule, although Zeo very rarely followed his own rules. <laughs> I'll save that for a Zeo talk. Uh, anyway. So no. Tomi gets there to see Kento's final moments, his final words to him as they reenact the promise and then Kento dies. And honestly, this seems rather touching before we get the mood whiplash of the ED starting. <laughs> Which, again, this is a joke with comment with Super Sentai all the time. It's like they'll have this super dramatic episode and then this really cheery ED, everyone dance to the ending theme song, song kind of thing happening. And that joke avoided Ryder so far, but it hit Ryder hard this week because Saber has an ED that's really cheery and everyone dances to the ED. Although, I guess this will explain why Kento doesn't get to be in the actual dance of the ED because he's dead. <laughs> yeah, he's dead. <clears throat> uh, yeah, so Kento is dead. So if you marked him on your ballot for Christmas death, uh, you win the prize, which is you were right. <laughs> Uh, everyone who voted Buster, like myself, yeah, we, we were wrong on this one. But, you know, Christmas isn't over yet, and we still have new forms to debut, and shit to go down, and a movie coming up, which obviously takes place before this shit goes down now, because it has to be an in-canon movie, because all these movies are canon. Uh, but, you know, we'll talk about that later. Uh, yeah, so Buster might die soon, uh, because the Christmas still isn't here. Uh, and they might do something to get rid of all the ex the three extra writers that are wandering around right now. Uh, they might get rid of them. They might stick around. We don't know. But, yeah. Uh, but, yeah, that is what's happening now. And Saber, this is a pretty short one compared to last week's episode. Because this is a pretty simple episode. It was mostly just all wrapping up to Kento's death. Uh, I do want to mention... Uh, uh, I'll probably save the joke about scans for next week's episode. Uh, but I also do want to talk about uh, Luna. Or that weird key that Sophia gave to May. Which might in fact be that key to that barrier thing that they were talking about in like episode 10? Or was it episode 9? One of the two. Uh, about Sophia and Sophia's disappearances. Which I hope will all be talked about in next, week episode, next week's episode. Uh, which will be the debut of a new form for Saber, or his new super form, a la... Honestly, uh, Crimson Dragon is more of a, a Shining Hopper thing, and this form will be more of a Shining Assault Hopper type of thing. Oh, also I do want to mention Tassel, because he's important to the plot now, because he pops in at the beginning talking to the mysterious figure who basically said Toma had to overcome a trial when he was in Avalon. And now he's talking to that mysterious figure, and now both of them are in front of uh, Toma crying over Kento's body. Uh, so, you know, Tassel might be getting a lot of importance in the next episode or afterwards to basically earn his thing as narrator. So he, so he is, in fact, a diegetic narrator, which is something I questioned way back in episode one <laughs> 12 weeks ago. Okay, it was more than 12 weeks because there was a break. So 13 weeks because there was that, you know, golf tournament break. So, yeah, this is, overall, I do like this episode. Out of all the episodes to kill off a character around this time period, I have to say, this one's pretty mint here. I think the best episode that they've done with this is maybe, again, Laser's Death in the debut of Dangerous Zombie back in x -Aid. Uh, But I do think the reveal of, uh, I, forget, I forget his name as a human, because I just keep referring to him as... Uh, <coughs> there's a vault but basically it vaults reveal as a trainer and build uh, so yeah this is pretty mid tier compared to those incidents or instances of the Christmas death or Christmas reveal and hopefully there will be more reveals to come as they ramp up to Christmas and yeah I'll see all of you next week for episode 13 have a happy holidays enjoy yourselves and, you know, just, just relax. The world's on fire, so we all just need something to calm us, calm us down and bring us a bit of joy. The whole, hopefully, Christmas will be that. But, you know, I'm just going to leave it here because this, this preamble's, I mean, this epilogue's running a bit too long. So, uh, yeah. See you all next time.